The Ukrainian military began to massively transfer to the Donbass the Smirch heavy multiple launch rocket systems in service with the armed forces of Ukraine. The target engagement range of the latter reaches 70 to 90 kilometers, while the destruction area can be up to 700,000 square meters, which is comparable to the area of several city blocks of Donetsk or the size of a number of settlements on the territory of the DPR and LPR. More precisely, the number of multiple launch rocket systems deployed in the Donbass remains unknown however, the armed forces of Ukraine are armed with about 80 multiple launch rocket systems of this type, which may indicate that Ukraine has decided to go for a very serious escalation. However, much more problematic is the fact that the Smirch MLRS Salvo allows you to strike at almost any point in the territory controlled by the DPR and LPR, and taking into account the reconnaissance already carried out by American military aircraft, the armed forces of Ukraine have almost complete information about the areas where militia forces are concentrated. Experts note that if the armed forces really use heavy 300mm, Multiple launch rocket systems in the Donbass will lead to extremely heavy losses for the DPR and LPR. At the moment, the tension in the Donbass is at a critical level, as the armed forces of Ukraine actually refuse to comply with the Minsk agreements and are escalating in the region, although no attempts are being made to start storming the DPR and LPR. Vladimir Putin will opt for the nightmare scenario of a full invasion of Ukraine as tensions rise towards a tipping point. The region has been on a knife edge since the end of last year when Moscow moved as many as 100,000 troops, as well as tanks and missiles, close to the border. The White House warned yesterday the situation was extremely dangerous and that Moscow could launch an attack at any point. It had been thought Mr. Putin would choose the simple option of sending troops into the Donbass region in southeastern Ukraine and then negotiate for it to become an independent state providing a buffer between pro-Western Ukraine and Russia. As the region is already occupied by pro-Russian separatists and has been in a state of war since 2014, it was believed it would offer little resistance. Boiling tensions with Vladimir Putin have erupted after Russia accused the UK of fueling the crisis on its border with Ukraine. Russia reacted furiously to news the UK's military had shipped thousands of anti-tank missiles to Ukraine this week to help repel a Moscow-backed invasion. Boris Johnson has been among numerous world leaders to have accused Mr. Putin of stoking tensions in the region. US President Joe Biden has previously warned his Russian counterpart of devastating consequences if a mooted invasion materializes. Despite this, at least 100,000 Russian troops currently sit on Ukraine's border along with tanks and other heavy weapons threatening to invade the former USSR state. 5C-17 military transport aircraft delivered 1080 NLAW anti-tank missile systems to Ukraine. In terms of their combat characteristics, the NLAW systems are comparable to the American Javelin anti-tank systems, with the possible exception of the range, which is limited to a distance of 800 meters. Nevertheless, this allows the armed forces of Ukraine to strike at the positions of the DPR and LPR in certain areas, and in some areas even strike at the suburbs of Donetsk, which is of particular concern. NLAW complexes are disposable, but their combat capabilities allow you to hit T-72 tanks. This poses a particular danger to the self-proclaimed republics, especially considering the large batch of these weapons. The current situation leads to the fact that in the near future a new armed conflict will flare up in the Donbass, especially since, according to representatives of the DPR, large formations of the armed forces of Ukraine are moving towards the settlement of Marienka. At the same time, we are talking about armored vehicles, and this is only a few hundred meters from the line of contact. Meanwhile, several hundred more armored vehicles were seen being transferred to the border with Ukraine. This is evidenced by video recordings demonstrating the scale of the transfer of various types of weapons towards the Ukrainian upper room. At the same time, given the data previously announced by the Western media that we are talking about 175,000 servicemen, today this figure may already be about 200,000 servicemen of the Russian armed forces and thousands of units of various types of military equipment.
Earlier it was reported that such a massive transfer of military equipment towards the Ukrainian border was due to the conduct of military exercises, however, judging by the number of weapons, this could be the most ambitious exercise in the world before that, the military exercises of 2018 were record-breaking, in which they took part about 300,000 military personnel. Russia delivered an ultimatum to the West on the issue of providing security guarantees. As part of the negotiations in Vienna on military security issues, the Russian delegation issued an ultimatum to the West, stating that if Russia's security guarantees are not provided on the Russian side's terms, then Russia will be ready to use its own security mechanisms. According to the head of the delegation, Konstantin Gavrilov, the ultimatum has been launched and the countdown has already begun. The moment of truth is coming when the West either accepts our proposals or other ways will be found to ensure the security of Russia. There is less and less time for this. The countdown has begun said Konstantin Gavrilov.